Good morning. It's time for Clubhouse Chatter. Here's Norm Ordez. That's right. Good morning out here on the West Coast and good afternoon for those out on the East Coast. And uh, that is producer Brian and Norm. You know, that is my sidekick. And I, I was thinking, you know, famous sidekicks. So Batman Robin, I was thinking, no. And I got to thinking about Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> and so that's who I'm going to kind of relate us to. I, I don't care who I am as long as I get to drive the car. You said Captain Tennille earlier, but I didn't agree with that. <laughs> so most of um, you guys who watch the show, producer Brian is a teacher and the girls head golf coach out South Salem High School. South Salem High School just won their second in a row state girls basketball title. That's right, man. Two. So congratulations to the Lady Saxons. And basketball is strong here in the Valley, man. I mean, Western Mennonite plays third in 2A. Um, Kennedy won 2A. So it's, you know, Portland area isn't dominating anymore. It's a good thing. So our guest this morning is from Forest City, North Carolina, and it is the voice of the Forest City Owls, and that is Boomer Dangle. Boomer, how are you doing this morning? Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Norm. Thanks for having me. Hey, not a problem. So, Forest City started following, you know, retweeting some of our tweets and uh, on Twitter, and so that's how we came in, in touch with them, and they play in the Coastal Plain League, which is kind of like out here the West Coast League. So they're on the level of the Corvallis Knights, the Bellingham Bells. Um, and actually, the Coastal Plain League, you know, ranking-wise, is ranked fairly high. I think I've seen it as high as number two among the collegiate summer leagues behind the Cape Cod League. And I think we can all agree that Cape Cod is the the cream of the crop. They're the best that is out there. But the Coastal Plain League, especially in recent years, has picked up traction and gained an enormous amount of scouts to come watch the baseball games. The At the Division One level, the Coastal Plain League is very well known. And at the, the, the Division Two II and Three levels, it's where a lot of the student athletes aim to go to. The Coastal Plain League is, uh, is one of uh, the, the premier collegiate summer league leagues uh out there and it's it's really especially in the last five years gained a lot of traction not just in the southeast on the west coast in california the, the players are starting to come eastward for the summer and play in the 60 games that the coastal plain league provides it goes all over the map from the northeast all the way to california like i said and while most of the players do come from the southeast or colleges, the reputation of the Coastal Plain League is starting to spread around the country and, Dan, to your point, almost start to edge out some other wooden bat leagues like Alaska or the North Woods League. The Coastal Plain League is at least competitive with those leagues if they haven't eclipsed it already. You know, so the Coastal Plain League, so let's see, what now? You, you're in Georgia, Virginia, North Carolina... And South Carolina. And South Carolina. And I think I'm missing yes, one more. I think I'm missing one more state. Uh, that's it for right now. Okay. There's 16 teams. There are three teams in Virginia uh, all the way on the coast towards the Atlantic and then all the way towards the southwest corner of the state in Martinsville, all over the state of North Carolina. And from again from the coast all the way through Forest City which is the westernmost team in the league and it's almost tucked away in the North Carolina mountains two teams in South Carolina in Florence and now in Lexington or right outside Columbia and in this off season the league just added its 16th team which is in Savannah Georgia and that team they recently announced their name will be the Bananas okay yes. and so that's uh, we're very much looking forward to the entertainment factor there. But the other part that's fantastic about bringing Savannah on is that they are playing in what was once a minor league stadium, as recently as last year was a minor league stadium, with the Savannah Sands Nats. And so we added... 
just another peak top-of-the-line facility to the league, and everybody's looking forward to making their inaugural trip to Savannah this year. So now talking about facilities, so you guys play in McNair Field, which is the – which is it still the newest ballpark in the Coastal Plain League? Uh, it is not. Last year, the what were the Columbia Blowfish moved about 20 miles west to Lexington County. They stayed – very close by where they originally were, only a few miles from the University of South Carolina. But that team built Lexington County Baseball Stadium, which is just a, a fantastic facility. So I say no that McNair Field is not the newest anymore, but the Lexington County Blowfish have come out and publicly said that they modeled their ballpark after McNair Field. They basically took the blueprint from McNair Field and then built a newer version of it in South Carolina. So my version of that answer is yes, McNair Field is still the newest, and it got duplicated just a few hours south of uh, where Forest City is. And it's the biggest compliment that we could ever receive. Look, we have a fantastic ballpark. Everybody who's ever come watch a game at McNair Field says that it is absolutely gorgeous, and it is. It's in right downtown Forest City, right off the main drag. It's just such a cute, quaint little town that you walk through downtown, you get lunch to eat at the drugstore, you get uh, there, there's a soda fountain right behind the drugstore counter, you have a meal there, and then you walk probably five minutes, and you're at the ballpark. It really has a small-town feel to it, but then you're watching this baseball game, and the stadium holds 3,000 fans, and you would think that you're at a minor league baseball game. That's how top of the line this facility is, and it's just gorgeous. The field is the namesake of Houston Texans owner Bob McNair, who was a resident who was born and raised in Forest City, North Carolina. He has oh, since wow. moved on to Houston, but the, that's where the field is got its name from um and just an unbelievable baseball facility anybody would be lucky to play on this field it's that beautiful you know looking looking at pictures of it it is it is a gorgeous ballpark and so yeah, so it, how are how are the sight lines in the ballpark you know people always talk about you know there's not a bad seat how are the sight lines you know with a, a stadium of you know three thousand like that it shouldn't be too bad no, it's not too bad. It's amphitheater-style seating, so the box seats uh, surround home plate. The backstop is 55 feet. The box seats are right there, right on top of um, of home house. And then behind the box seats, there's the concourse level, which is the main level that fans walk in on, and they're able to walk around the concourse. And then there's bleacher seating behind that. But there's really not a bad seat in the house. We've packed 3,700 fans in. That's the most uh, that we've ever had at McNair Field, and that's when the Japanese national team came to play against Forest City. Uh, I believe it was either in 2008 or 2009, and we packed nearly 4,000 fans in. Down the right field line and left field line, there are grass berms for fans to bring a blanket, sit out on, and enjoy baseball. Almost has a spring training feel to it down the line, and uh, but there's really not a bad seat in the house. It, it, it's magnificent from a proximity to the game. There are great sight lines into both dugouts, uh, so you can you, you can feel acquainted with the ball players in that regard. You can feel like you're right on top of the action. And it, as, from a fan's perspective, you don't have to walk too far to use the restroom. You don't have to walk too far to find the concession stand. Everything is right there. And more often than not, all of your best friends that live in town with you will be at the ball game, and so since it's such a uh, small ballpark or a such a convenient ballpark to get from one end to the other, you'll just run across everybody you know, and it's very fun. It's very fun, and all the fans know that. So, how big is Forest City? So, Forest City itself is quite small. Forest City is its own entity. Uh, it's close to 8,000 people, but it neighbors a city named Rutherfordton, which is a little bit larger, and it also neighbors a city named Shelby. And so we have three cities which abut each other, and for that reason, it's almost kind of regarded as, for lack of a better term, one big metropolitan area. And while obviously none of those three are metropolises, you kind of take the area as a whole. And so 
there are a decent amount of uh, people in that area. Most of them have uh, either lived there their whole lives or just recently moved. And I'm telling you, if you ever drove through any of those three cities, immediately on impact, you fall in love with it. You just meet the nicest people on earth. You will not ever hear a bad word said about anybody because nobody had anything bad to say. Everybody constantly smiles in Forest City and Rutherford and, and Shelby, constantly is kind and just the nicest people on the face of the earth and everybody is so genuine and so kind so it's a small area it's tucked away in rutherford county which is not too far from the appalachian mountains you know, north carolina as a state is really split into three different sections you have the coast you have the coastal plain hence why the league got its name and the plain goes through the middle of the state and then you have the mountains on the west coast of north carolina as well and so you have those three different sections uh, to divide the state and north carolina uh the, the owls as i said are the westernmost team in the league we're the closest to the mountains and the closest that uh anybody travels to the mountains a lot of the league sits in that coastal plain middle of north carolina middle of south carolina region and then the league has a few teams on the coast as well so let's talk a little bit about the uh the nickname the owls so obviously you know i mean most you know teams have a connection uh so i'm assuming that there's a ton of owls in the area that you're known for owls out there that's part of the reason uh that's actually a big part of the reason the, the story with how forest city came to be the home of this baseball team is fascinating because in the early 2000s, this team played its baseball in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And they were the Spartanburg Stingers down there, enjoyed a fair amount of success, and has had three alumni go on to play in the major leagues. The team uh, in 2007 thought about relocation and started to make uh, decisions based on that and the owner at the time Ken and Betty Silver they just drove they started driving up the interstate uh, up from Spartanburg South Carolina there's a small highway that takes you right from Forest City and right from Rutherford to, down to Spartanburg which is the nearest I would say big city to that area and so Ken and Betty jumped in the car they started driving north and they happened upon this small town with two stoplights in downtown and just an adorable city and it's Forest City, North Carolina. So they come in there, they say, this has to be the spot. Everything fits. It feels right. Nobody has anything but a smile on their face. This is going to work. So they moved the team uh, to Forest City, but the history of Forest City goes back even further. In the 1940s and the 1950s, the Owls played baseball in North Carolina. So when the team came back to Forest City or when Forest City regained baseball, they had to name the team the Owls because that's how the history dating back half a century was. The Forest City Owls played uh, in the Sally League a long time, mm -hmm. way back. And so uh, the, the history was there in baseball. The whole Coastal Plain League thrives on the history of North Carolina's baseball. There's a book by a man named Mark Cryan, who is a professor at Elon, and Mr. Cryan details the history of North Carolina baseball, and the name of the book is The Cradle of Baseball, and it's so aptly named because North Carolina as a state has such a rich history. When you think of North Carolina and baseball, because there's no major league team there, people often gravitate towards the Durham Bulls and the Charlotte Knights, right. which as AAA teams are about the closest thing you could come to being a major league club without being a major league club. We talk about ball players all the time being 4A guys. The Durham Bulls and the Charlotte Knights as organizations are probably 4A organizations. They're just top uh, top class, unbelievably well run, beautiful ballparks uh, and well respected. But the whole state of North Carolina going back to the early days of the Sally League and going back to to guys like Luke Appling and even before that, the whole state has an unbelievable history. And so to answer your question in a roundabout way, 
once the team came back to Forest City or once baseball returned to Rutherford County, the name the Owls was already there. And so there you go. That's how that's how it happened. And before any of us were uh, born, the Forest City Owls played baseball in this small corner of North Carolina. So what kind of so McNair Field? So what do you guys have planned for this summer? So what kind of um, promotions do you have going on? And as as a baseball fan and as a foodie, you know, do you have something? Do you have something special at the ballpark that is just yours? I mean, you know, food wise and whatnot. Well, I'm also a food guy, and every ballpark that I traveled to last year in the Coastal Plain League, I tried to get the real experience, and, and I asked around, and I said, I asked what to get, and uh, I had some really delectable treats, but, and I'm biased, uh, because I spent half of my games in Forest City, I fell in love with the food there, and it's, it's hard not to, all the fans tell you the same thing, which is that the Philly cheesesteak at McNair Field is probably the best food that the Coastal Plain Lake has to offer. This year, the menu um, will go through a few changes, uh, but all for the better, I promise you that. And uh, the the uh, atmosphere will be very efficient at the ballpark. Uh, and, you know, when you go in between innings to grab a Coke or to grab – uh, food, and again, I recommend the Philly cheesesteak, but it did make the entire experience better. But we are known through the Coastal Wine League for the Philly cheesesteak, and it's my favorite and many, many others' favorites as well. Promotions-wise, we have a big year coming up, and it starts on the first day of the season. On May 30th, the four City Owls will be playing the U.S. Military All-Stars, and that's an exhibition game. It does not count toward our Coastal Plain League record, but it's the first game that's on the schedule for the Owls in 2016. Again, that's May 30th, and it's against the U.S. Military All-Stars. Anybody with a military ID gets free admission to that game. All of our season ticket holders are invited to that game, too, and we hope to not only get our first glimpse of competitive baseball at McNair Field this year, but also appreciate all the bravery and dedication that the military team brings to the ballpark in a baseball sense, but most importantly in the militaristic and in, in the military sense as well in their duty to the country. And so uh, it's one thing to sacrifice and join the military. It's another thing to do that. And oh, by the way, I'm going to dedicate X amount of hours weekly to playing baseball as well. And those guys work very hard. We're looking forward to honoring them and kicking off the season in, uh, in a great way. The Owls have released uh, their promotional schedule is online, forestcitybaseball.com. It's right there. One of the uh, big attractions this season. Uh, we're, we're still working all of them out. I don't want to spoil any surprises because in the coming days and in the coming months, we will release everything. And uh, once we flush the ideas out, they'll get out there and just excite fans. But right now, I'm most excited, and I believe the rest of the front office, is most excited for the U.S. military game, which is May 30th, and uh, and honoring those men, getting our first glimpse of the Forest City baseball team, and bringing baseball back to this small town, which in the summer is just the talk of the town. Everybody in town is talking about the Forest City Owls, so we're ready for that season again. All right. So, hey, the military, I'm going to tell you, have you guys ever seen the military All-Stars play before? This is our first time playing them. I, they bring it. They are – they're pretty good. They're pretty good. I've had a, a couple of guys on in the past that have played for them, and um, they're they a pretty good team. Well, we're looking forward to it. We will be assembling a group of guys from many different schools to play against them. So the, the – I don't want to say the jitters, but the lack of chemistry that naturally occurs – when you put 30 men who've never met each other together and throw them on a baseball diamond, that uh, will be a good experience for the Owls to work out some kinks before the Coastal Plain League season starts. But we're most important, we're most importantly excited just to get baseball back in Forest City and have some competition. And if the competition is great, even better. 
because we love competition. We love to see great baseball played in Forest City, and that's the main thing that we're excited about for May 30th. So let's chat about the roster. So the guys that you got coming on. So is JT McGuire back as a, the manager? This will be JT's second season as manager. I talked to Coach McGuire earlier this week, as a matter of fact, uh, and he said that he could not be more excited for May 30th for the team to come into Forest City and start his second year. He says he feels about 100 times more comfortable this year going into the season than last, which was his first year as head coach in the Coastal Plain League. He has that year under his belt. Now he's ready to come back and have a successful season for the Owls. And Coach McGuire, I, I could hear his smile through the phone call that I had with him, and he's just so excited to get back to Forest City, see the residents of Forest City, who he became friends with last year, and coach these young men in baseball. McGuire, he coaches right now at Wofford, but before that, he was at Hartford Community College, which is in Maryland, and one of the best co of junior college programs that uh, baseball has to offer. A lot of kids go from Hartford to either Division One or Division Two programs out of there to progress their baseball, and McGuire had so much success at Hartford that he then went to join uh, Wofford, who's having a successful season right now in the Southern Conference, and we know that McGuire is our guy to, to lead us for the Owls again in 2016. So we're really looking forward to getting JT back uh, in the coach's box this year. I know the residents of Forest City are looking forward to having JT around just because he's an unbelievable guy. And JT is so educated in baseball, not just the X's and O's, but the history of baseball as well, that he's an unbelievable conversationalist when you talk about the game. Uh, and even when you're not talking about the game, you can tell the – the sincerity that he has with every word that he says. So the Owls knew he'd be the right guy to bring back. So about the roster, so do you have any, how many returning players do you have, and uh, what excites you most about the 2016 roster? Two players come back for the 2016 Owls that played on the team last year, both of them pitchers and both of them studs. Chris Rash plays his college ball at Tusculum College. Uh, he's now in his uh he's now in his, he's now an upperclassman but he started his baseball career at vanderbilt and so he was recruited out of high school to go to go play at vanderbilt one of four perennial powerhouses in ncaa baseball he went to vanderbilt suffered an arm injury said that vanderbilt might not be the best long-term option for him goes to tusculum which is located in East Tennessee. And this year he's moved to being a weekend starter for Tusculum uh, and, and had a great amount of success. He's made six appearances for Tusculum this year, a total of 25 and two-thirds innings, three wins, one loss, and a 281 earn run average. And it's that kind of production that he's putting up at Tusculum right now that excites us for the upcoming season. We knew what we get. Uh, when we learned that Chris was coming back to the Owls, we knew what we would get out of him. He missed three starts last year and still finished second on the team in innings pitched. Chris is a workhorse. He will go out there, and every day he'll give you seven innings. He's got a great fastball, comes almost from a three-quarters arm slot, and a curveball with a heck of a lot of movement on it as well. And so we know what we get out of Chris, a reliable pitcher, who will go out and give us seven innings anytime. Very much excited to have him back. The other player who joins us again for this season is um, Chaz Miller from Bluefield College. Chaz is more of a bullpen guy. Uh, he has sharp movement on his fastball, gets a lot of swings and misses. On It's almost close to a cutter with how much movement he has on his four-seam and his two-seam fastball. And he picked up uh, either three or four saves in the course of a week last year for the Owls. So we know that our starting pitching is set with Chris. At least one of five guys is set, and the back end of the bullpen looks solid as well with Chaz coming back. I, when I talked to Coach McGuire this week, he said he wants to go with a five-man pitching rotation, and that's very feasible at this point with the team that he has recruited and the team that he's bringing in. Adam Ordonez comes from North Carolina A&T. He's going to earn 
a, a lot of time on the mound, but he's a, a great hitter as well. So we're excited to bring him in. Uh, just a, a great pitching staff that McGuire has uh, accumulated for this upcoming season, but a lot of great position players as well. And the one that JT was most excited about, Coach McGuire specifically went out of his way to make note of Stephen Tomlinson and then um, talk about Tomlinson, who goes to North Georgia. Now, Tomlinson, in college so far, he's played in 18 games. He's batting 371 with three home runs. It's hard not to get excited about this kid when you just look at the numbers, all right? And then he, Tomlinson will share the outfield with Lee Sponteller, which every day it seems like he uh, does something better than the day before. He's batting 458 right now wow. in college at Ohio Dominican University. It, the, the kid reaches base every time he comes to the plate. And so those two guys in the outfield really, really have us uh, hoping for a promising season. Tomlinson and J.T. McGuire was an outfielder himself when he played baseball. And I know J.T., he's not one to exaggerate. But J.T. said that Stephen Tomlinson is as close to a five-tool ball player as he has ever seen, and he's looking forward to coaching that as well. As a former outfielder himself, he can't wait to get his hands on Tomlinson, try and teach him something about the game. But he's as close to a five-tool baseball player that J.T. has ever seen. And again, J.T. is not one to hyperbolize. He wouldn't say that unless he really, really felt that. And so those two guys in the outfield, the returners, uh, in the pitching rotation and in the back end of the bullpen. And then I'll give you one wild card. He's a freshman at the University of Tennessee. Daniel Vasquez will come in and pitch for the Owls this year as well. He's appeared five times for the Volunteers. Uh, again, and so he, he's appeared out of the bullpen. He's made a few starts as well right now, sitting at one win, one loss. Uh, his ERA is a bit deceptive. He at times can leave the ball uh, over the plate. But, again, a lot of talent to work with there. And so with Vasquez coming in, he's the one that I'm most excited about to see. And he's the midweek starter right now for the University of Tennessee. He's from California originally. But I cannot wait to watch that Daniel Vasquez come to McNair Field and pitch. I think this kid has real upside. And I think the fans will view him that way as well. Once they see his ability to change speed, and to put the ball over the plate, I think that he has a lot to offer. And so with McGuire aiming towards a five-man pitching rotation, Vasquez and Rash will be two arms to watch for, uh, along with the other guys who come back for the Owls uh, again this year. And there, and Ryan Steiner uh, comes from the University of Albany. He's a right-handed pitcher in his junior year. Another guy who McGuire recruited uh, at Hartford Community College uh, it then moved on to play Division One baseball. Uh, there, are, there are a bunch of great names on this team who I can sit here and tell you about these names right now, and it might not carry much weight. But let's talk again in September and tell me if you start hearing these guys' names when next year's draft comes around or when you start reading Baseball America or when you read Baseball Perspectives because these names will be well-known by the end of this college baseball season and certainly by the end of the summer and that's what we're hoping for that's the whole idea of summer wooden bat league baseball is get scouts eyes on these ball players teach them something about the game have them continue to play through the summer but it's also excited for us fans because hey we get to see ryan steiner before he becomes ryan steiner and the right. best player or you shouldn't say the best player although it's probably true but that is a biased way to say it. The most well-known player to ever come through the Coastal Plain League is Justin Verlander. Kevin Euclid has been through the league as well. A.J. Ellis. A lot of uh, well-known, almost household name baseball players have come through the league. But when you sit there and you get to watch Ryan Zimmerman or Justin Verlander at 20 years old, and then he becomes, oh, hey, that's Justin Verlander. He won the Cy Young Award and the MVP. I remember watching him play in Wilson, North Carolina. That's the excitement for the fans. That Verlander turned out to be okay, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, you think so, huh? I think uh, I think he went on to have 
a decent career. Verlander played in the league in 2002 in Wilson, North Carolina for the Tops, and then made his major league debut almost three calendar years later. So it all happened very quickly for That's Justin crazy. Verlander. But, uh, yeah, I'd say he does all right for himself. I'd say Justin can throw a ball. What kind of fan turns out – for the Owls, and not only for the Owls, but in the Coastal Plain League. I mean, is is the fan? Do you get a um, a pretty knowledgeable fan that that shows up to the games? Absolutely, especially at Forest City. As I said earlier, the North Carolina is, is spectacular as far as being baseball fans. That everybody grows up as a baseball fan in North Carolina, and so uh, with that in mind. Everybody's unbelievably knowledgeable about the game, and Owls fans specifically are unbelievably knowledgeable. You can, like I said, when the season's going on, you walk through town and everybody's talking tourists to the Owls, and it's not just the simple conversation. I went to the game last night; they won. No, it's a very in-depth conversation. As in, I agree with what McGuire did in the seventh inning. He put on the hit and run, and that's how the Owls won the game. They talk at length about the game the day before. They talk very in-depth and knowledgeable about the sport, and I experienced that with every ballpark I went to in the Coastal Plain League last year. Nice. All right. Yeah, and that makes it exciting for the kids as well, which, again, these are 19, 20, 21-year-old ball players, and when they're out in public, both ends of the conversation are knowledgeable about the sport. And occasionally there are disagreements. But that's the best part about baseball is that you and I could sit down and talk about baseball and disagree, but that's that's what made baseball so amazing for the past 150 years. Is oh, that absolutely. I get, my hair, I get my hair cut. My barber thinks this guy should be starting, and I think the other guy should be starting. And we walk away, we shake hands. And there's a ball game that night. And then we come back the next time I get my hair cut, and we argue again. But there's a game that night, and we keep talking about it. So as, as a baseball fan, how do I follow the Owls? And is there do I go to, like, if I wanted to listen on the Internet, do I just go to the website? That's a great question. You can keep in touch with the Owls in the off season. The best way is either on forestcitybaseball.com or on Twitter and Instagram, at Forest City Owls. And we update that constantly. We try and get all of our information out there, not only in a timely manner, but in a very informative manner as well. Uh, we've made a big push to boost our social media presence this year. Uh, so, again, on Twitter, at Forest City Owls, and online, forestcitybaseball.com. Come May 30th, the Owls will be playing every night for two and a half months straight. The way you pick up the audio for the Coastal Plain League is by going to coastalplain.com. And it's a lot of people make this mistake. I admittedly made it the first time that I tried to log on to. It's not Coastal Plains. Uh, it's not plural. Right. It's singular, Coastal yep. Plain. And I made that mistake. We've all done it. But it's coastalplain.com. And then along the top, there will be a tab that says webcast. And every night, fans will have the availability to listen to every Coastal Plain League baseball game via the CPL web pass. And that's with the Owls. Listen, uh, we have uh, our broadcaster this upcoming year will be Michael Dixon. I'm very excited to hear Dixon on the air. I've listened to him many times before. He's spectacular. He is magnificent on the air and draws a picture with his words better than almost anybody at his age can. And so he will be on the air nightly. The Owls will be on AM radio for the game of the week every Wednesday in the upcoming season uh, with Dixon's voice. But for 60 games, it's Michael Dixon being the eyes and ears of the Fourth City Owls. And last year, we had fans from Minnesota tune in nightly. We had fans from Seattle, Washington tune in nightly overseas uh, in in the Far East. I can't remember specifically if it was Korea, Japan, or somewhere in that realm. But that's the beauty of the internet is that there's a town of eight thousand people who come to these games. But the Forest City Owls are known worldwide, and people keep up with them worldwide. And so the upcoming season, with the success of the team 
that will come uh, under McGuire's team, we, we're going to gain even more followers. And so coastalplane.com, along the top, web pass, and for 60 games, we'll be right there. And hopefully more than 60 games, hopefully through the playoffs as well. If you want to host a player, how do you go about doing that? Go to forestcitybaseball.com or call the Owls. The phone number is 828-245-0000. Call the front office, get online, email the team, send us a Twitter message. Just make sure that you get in our face and host a ball player because it's the most rewarding experience, not only for the host parents, but for kids as well. Last year, I lived with a beautiful host family, just the, the salt of the earth, the nicest people. And I lived with uh, them and got to know them on a personal level. I still communicate with that family, but they had a grandson who was uh, in elementary school and then and now in middle school. And two ball players and myself lived with that host family. And we basically acted as his big brother for the summer. And I still keep in touch with Malachi. And I just texted him the other day, as a matter of fact. And I know that the two ball players who were under the same roof, they both keep up with the family as a whole. It's such a rewarding experience. And that's not unique to the Coastal Plain League. That's any summer collegiate league, is that if you host a ball player, the ball player will be so gracious for your hospitality and then so appreciative of the clemency that's offered to them that everybody gets a lot out of the experience. The ball player uh, can educate young kids about baseball, can educate young kids uh, and serve in a big brother role, but everybody gets something out of it. So again, call the owl, 828-245-0000, get on forestcitybaseball.com, write us a letter. I don't care, just alert us in some manner that you're interested in doing this and you will not regret it i promise you you know that host family deal is pretty cool you know i remember um 10 years ago you know being in lancaster california as clubhouse manager i remember my host families and i still talk to them 10 years to the day you know and so it is it is a pretty special deal well and the best part about the world we live in right now is that because of facebook because of snapchat because of texting because of facetime it, you can basically keep up with somebody and be their best friend and see them every day and interact with them every single day without being in the same zip code. You can be across the country from the people and still have that same face-to-face -face interaction with them. And I, that's not unique to the host family and the ball players. That goes to the ball players as well. I know a lot of the players who were on the team last year constantly text, FaceTime, Snapchat each other. They Facebook each other all the time. And those relationships indoor because of the technology. That is right. So 2016, Fear the Owl, ForestCityBaseball.com, the Forest City Owls out of Forest City, North Carolina. You know what? I'm so glad that you guys started um, following Clubhouse Chatter and retweeting us, and, and this is what it's led up to. You know, I'm excited for you know, to see see what Forest City does this season. And, Boomer, hey, you, you want to take us out with a home run call? <laughs> I will say that the first game that the Owls played the last season at home, the home opener was rained out, and so they, the actual home opener got pushed off a few days. But the first game that actually went nine innings at McNair Field last year ended in a Brady Policelli walk-off home run over the left field line, and I remember it. I will remember it until I go to the grave, and it's high and deep to left field. Johnson back at the wall looking up, and it's a homer. Brady Policelli hits a walk-off shot, and the Owls have their first one of 2015. Once again, Mr. Boomer Dangle of the Forest City Owls. Boomer, hey, thank you for taking time. And, uh, you know, here's to a, a good and healthy uh, season with Four City this year. Guys, really appreciate it. Happy baseball season to you both. Uh, enjoy every minute of now through October because we get to watch the best sport on earth almost Absolutely. nightly. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. And, hey, go Owls. And we'll, we'll get you some Clubhouse Chatter shirts. I'll send them to uh, Four City there. And uh, you guys can spread them out amongst each other in the uh, in the front office.
Lovely. Sure to appreciate it, guys. Take care. All right, Boomer. Thanks. Once again, Mr. Boomer Dangle of the Four City Owls. Man, I'm I'm ready for baseball season, Brian. Totally, Boomer got me going, and that's it's exciting, good stuff. Um, I just wish they were a lot closer. I know. <laughs> I'd, I'd go to a Four City. Heck yeah. You know, so we're talking about Brian and I are talking about doing this um, tour. You know, and now I got to kind of think about going. We're we're trying to kill a spider here. So <laughs> <laughs> we got it, by the way. Um. <laughs> you know, we're talking about doing a uh, a tour. Yeah, you know, maybe, a road trip. Maybe we had a road trip back to North Carolina to the Coastal Plain League. Do you really want to hang out for a week driving down I whatever to North Carolina? You know, here's what we need to do. <laughs> Let's take the Greyhound bus and and just vlog everything we go about. You know, take a couple of weeks. We are now in Montana. <laughs> Norm has left Brian. <laughs> he is now taking the train. Like I said, I'm excited. Um, so I want to touch a little bit on, so Bryce Harper came out this week, and so I'm a Bryce Harper fan. Young young buck, good ball player, most valuable player, came out this week and said baseball is, what do you say, baseball was worn out. I don't know if I agree with that, Brian. You know, Goose Gossage had something to say about it, and he really riled riled the the fandom up and you know so my question is is this goose gossage has has paid his dues as a ball player so i'm okay with what goose has to say bryce harper on on the other hand you know bryce hasn't been around in the majors very long and yes he's won a most valuable player award and he is one of the game's biggest players you know and so my question is who the hell is he to come out and say that you know i some point you know you know baseball's different you know baseball is different from the nfl the nba where they promote players a little bit more you know, is it time to promote, you know, the Mike Trouts and, and the Bryce Harpers and the Adam Joneses and the Andrew McCutcheons a little bit more? What do you think, Brian? I, It's such a difficult thing because you have so many entities in, involved in it. You've got so many different players. Um, it can't just be the league doing it. It has to be everybody doing it. Yep. And I, I agree with Goose. You know, I agree with uh, Harper as well. Harper's going to get the the credibility of the younger generation. Absolutely. And we need people like that to maybe, if if it's partially true, he steps up and maybe they make a few changes. I think maybe just changes for the good. Here's what I think. Baseball has a tendency to police itself. And so the unwritten rules, you know, though I don't agree with a lot of them, but, you know, they've been around forever. You know, you talk, you know, you know, when my grandpa was was alive, you talk about the unwritten rules. And I mean, even, you know, back in the 30s and 40s, they were around. And Bryce needs to be careful because he's going to get plunked. Yes, but there's so much money in the game. Can you afford to plunk one of your best players in the league and lose him? Look at look at Buster Posey. You know, they lost him for how long? You know, there's a couple of there's a couple of guys, a couple of pitchers, not naming any names, that I don't think they would really care. Yeah, but you said baseball will police itself. I think MLB, the head guys, will actually come in and police right. them and, you know, and, and the, find them. You know, and the deal is, is you plunk Harper, then somebody from your team is going to get plunked. So you're putting yourself out there. You might even, as a pitcher, get hit. And then what? You know, if somebody rides one in on your hands or your wrists and hits you there, you're done for a while. But that's always been part of the game. And it's always, you know, you're just not getting up there and getting three ball or you know, four balls and three strikes. You've got to think about that pitch coming at you. Absolutely. I mean, it's hard enough to hit the ball, but now you're thinking, Do, am I going to take one in the back of the thigh or am I going to get one on the outside of the corner and strike me out? You know, what's going to happen? Right. Those are the things people don't think of. It's already hard enough to hit a round uh, ball with a round bat. And then you put the other stuff in there. I mean, it's it's a mind game. It is. 
And uh, don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not saying Bryce Harper's a bad guy. I love Bryce Harper as a player. He plays the game hard. Great talent. He's getting he's people just, to talk, young. though. He's getting he, people to absolutely. talk. Absolutely, and that's Bingo. and that's good. You know, that's good for baseball. So once again, I'm Norm. That is producer Brian from South Salem, the 6A girls Oregon State champs, two, two in a row. Two baby. Can you believe that? Would you Would you have thought this? Uh... I mean, you can never know that it's going to happen. You I mean, know, you I know was, you have a good team. But... I I was surprised. Like I told you before the show, I was surprised they got through Oregon City. But I, you know, that's coming from you know I'm not really educated on 6A girls basketball in Oregon though. Well, Oregon City was tough because they had won like 20 some in a row and was the only team that beat South all year long, and then Jesuit. I yeah. mean, Jesuit looked really good in that third and fifth place or third and fifth place game yesterday. The University of Jesuit. It, they can <laughs> recruit, and of course, we can talk about South. There's some issues there that we can always discuss, but uh, it's tough to repeat. No matter if you're a uh, you know University of Jesuit or you know the Westland boys, yeah, you know they they've been rolling. Once again, producer Brian Norm. Thanks to everybody out in Four City who were watching the show today. Hey, thank you guys. Um, can't wait for the season. We are sponsored by BaseballDudes.com. To be the best, you must train like the best. Chris Gazelle up there in Vancouver, Washington. Baseballisms.com. If you like my hat, which is the childhood cancer, I wore this today for for Elise Ritter down in where is elise down in mobile alabama her mom and i went to high school kimberly idaho she's battling she's got a tumor and it's starting to grow again so i wore the house hat for elise if you like it you could buy it at baseballisms.com also sponsored by we covered baseball dudes based by pros mitch canham up there in washington building an athlete sports education his dad, Mark Canham, MDM Designs, does our shirts and hoodies. If you want to buy shirts or hoodies, you can give me a, shoot me an email at normbo18 at gmail.com. We stream live every week on yamhilltoday.com. And uh, we, are, we are looking at bringing another show into the loop. And we are going to, it's going to be, what do we decide on? Yamhill Sports Today. And we're going to cover Northwest and Oregon sports. Yeah, that sounds about right. And so we'll be doing that here shortly. And, hey, we're always looking for sponsors, normbo18 at gmail.com. You can follow us at Clubhouse Chatter one t on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're on MLB.com blogs, Clubhouse Chatter. We're also on iTunes. Um, once again, I'm Norm bringing baseball love. Thanks for watching. Next week we are off, but we'll be back the following week. I think Doc Jacobs will be coming back on. And so thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.